Hi everyone, it's Lindy Yan from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be creating this cute little birdhouse cubby card. And we're going to be creating it as a slimline card. But I also wanted to show you that it's basically a one layer card. And we're going to add lots of interest and dimension, even though it is one layered. And I'll show you some little different tips and tricks for doing that. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the stamp set we're going to be using today, and this is from Art Impressions, and this is called the Birdhouse Cubby Set. And the dies are included in this set, and you can see you get these adorable little birds, that beautiful birdhouse. You get a vine, a uh, flower, and some extra sentiments as well. So it's a really great set. You basically have everything you need here to create a really fun card. So let's go ahead and start our stamping. I've got my sticky mat placed in my Misty stamp positioner, and then I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And let's go ahead and lay out some of the stamps we're going to be using today. Now for the vines, we're going to need four sets of the vines. Well, actually I did stamp a few extras as well to tuck in here and there. So probably five or six of those would be fine. We've got the little flowers that come in the set. We're going to be stamping lots of those. And then we'll stamp each of the little birds and the birdhouse. So let's go ahead and ink these up using the Versifying Onyx Black Ink. This is a permanent black ink. And then I've got my Stampendable Stamp Press to press those out. So again, I'm going to stamp some extras of these so that we have plenty of them for when we start building up our card. We'll start with Scarlet Red and Yellow to do our coloring. And again, these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. So these are a water-based pen. And I'll be using my Zig Blender Pen to do all the blending here. Now, I started with the yellow and then I'm adding that uh, Scarlet Red. I couldn't quite find the shade that I wanted for the birdhouse. So I'm just going to do some blending of these two colors. I wanted more of maybe like a creamsicle color. And actually that scarlet red will give me some nice shadowing as well. So this is a larger area. So I'm just going to work in some smaller sections and I'm just adding that darker color kind of where I want those bits of shadow to be. Now, in, later on, you'll see that I did find this to be a little brighter than I wanted. I wanted to give it a little bit more of an aged look. So I'll be adding a little bit of some gray to the edges, and you're going to see that's going to make quite a large difference on this. Now, I'm st switching over to the gray-brown to do along the bottom of the birdhouse. Again, just putting a bit of that color on either side and then kind of pulling in towards the center. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, what I wanted to do was give this card lots of layers and texture, but I didn't want to add the foam dots or pop things up. I really wanted it to be a fairly flat card. So in order to do that, we're going to just do a few different things to add that dimension. We're going to create a frame around the edges, but we're not going to pop it up. We're going to die cut the frame to get those extra stitch layers. That's going to give us stitching around the frame, and then it's going to give us stitching around the panel that we're going to insert inside the card. So again, adding texture to the card without adding that extra pop up layer. So we're going to have some fun with this. It's just another way to look at your cards. And also, if you're concerned about mailing some of these that get very dimensional, this is a way to get that look of dimension without adding any gems or pop dots or anything like that. So it'll go through the mail nice and easily. So I'm sure you've noticed as we're going along, I've got the colors listed in the upper left-hand corner. And they'll also be listed on the blog as well. So I'm continuing to blend that out. And I just love this smoky teal color. I thought it looked so pretty with this kind of creamsicle color. I thought those two really complemented each other. 
I'm going to use that same color on the doors. Now when you die cut this birdhouse cubby, what's really fun is it's going to cut out those little window openings so you don't have to color those in. It's also going to cut the doors. The double doors will open in the center and that little door here that I'm working on is going to open as well. So it's really interactive and fun. You can tuck your little birds inside those openings. You could tuck a little sentiment in there, whatever you want. So these are very interactive. Now, when we do the uh, birdhouse, at this point I wasn't exactly sure, so I end up coloring in the post on the birdhouse. But as I went along, I decided to cut away that post and have it hanging from these vines, which we're going to make look a little bit more like branches on a tree. So that is another way to change this up, just to make it look different. You can do it obviously with that post, which is really pretty. You could have a garden of flowers underneath there and create a beautiful scene with a grassy border and some flowers. But today I thought it would be fun to just have it look like it's hanging. And then we're going to, again, create a beautiful sky for the background. And here's where you can see me adding some of that light gray, just to give a little bit more of an aged effect to the birdhouse. And here is where you'll see me coloring in that post, but I didn't need to. We are going to cut that off. Now, mid green and dark green will be the two colors I'm going to use to do these little vines. And I'm just adding a bit of that darker color to the base of the leaves and then just kind of pulling that out. Now I didn't think they quite popped enough, so you will see that I am going to come in with a little bit of yellow on the tips of these leaves just to give them a little bit more of a highlight. So here's where I'm grabbing the yellow and just adding a little touch of that again to the tips of the leaves. Now I've got the pale orange. I'm not going to completely color in these flowers. I'm adding it to the center and then just pulling it out and I'm going to leave the tips of those petals white. I can come back over with another layer of that same color just to give it a little bit more of a shadow. And then again, just pulling it out, but not all the way. Then I've got the scarlet red again, and I'm adding that to the center. And I'll do all of those little flowers the exact same way. For the birds, I'm using orange, sugared almond pink, and aquamarine blue. I'll do the cheeks in the pink, a little orange on each of the beaks, and then that aquamarine blue on the body. And I'll do, again, I'll do all of these exactly the same with a little bit of quick blending. I want to keep them fairly light. I'm just adding a few little shadows. And I'll keep the tummy area the lightest. And then I'll do all of those the same. And so let's take a look at this up close. So all our coloring is done. We can go ahead and grab those coordinating dies that came with the set. I'm using my Sizzix Sidekick machine and I'm going to just place the dies on top and add a little bit of post-it tape just to hold those in place while we run those through the die cutting machine. Now again, you'll see how cute this is when it die cuts. You can get all of those little openings will be cut out and those little doors will open and close. And you can see that there. Isn't this just so sweet? So I'll die cut the rest of the pieces. Got everything all set. Now I've got my slimline die set from Art Impressions. And I'm going to grab that second largest die. So let's go ahead and die cut the panel for the front of the card. This will go inside our frame. And we can start coloring this. I'm starting off with the Distress Oxide Speckled Egg, and I've got one of my Hero Arts blending brushes. Now I will list and link all the products I'm using today down below and also on my blog. 
So I'm going to add this color, but I don't want it to be completely even across the panel. I want some light and dark areas, so it'll kind of look a little bit cloudy as well. Now I'm going to add a bit of that color to my glass media mat. I'll spritz it with a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer, and then I'll grab a small paintbrush and I'll go ahead and spatter this panel. So this is the first layer of spattering that we're adding. We are going to be adding another layer of spattering that will have this beautiful metallic look. So let's go ahead and let that dry. And then I'm going to grab my metallic pastel accent paints. These are from Prima. And you can see all these beautiful colors that you get. Now I'm going to grab that one there, kind of that teal blue. I'm adding a little bit of water, and this set does come with a little brush, so I'm just going to grab that brush, and I'm going to go ahead and spatter this panel. And again, this is going to give it a beautiful teal metallic spattered effect to the front of our panel. Which again, what we're trying to do is add some dimension and layers without adding any pop dots or, or gems. So now I've got the largest slimline die and that second largest slimline die that we used before. And what I'm going to do is center these on my Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And we're going to die cut a frame. So I want to make sure I line these up really well. So I'm going to take my time here and make sure that I have these lined up. And then what I'm going to do is tape the dies together. So I'm not really taping it to the cardstock yet. I'm just taping the two dies together. And these dies have that pretty stitch border. So we're going to get two stitch edges on the frame and then a stitched edge around the panel for the front of the card. So you can see I've got these taped together and I can go ahead and run them through the die cutting machine. It is a little bit long for the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, so I'm just going to slide it down and run that through again. So that'll give me that die cut frame. Now I realized at this point that it die cut that panel on the inside, which I could have used that to begin with. So if you want to eliminate that step of die cutting the panel first, um, just go ahead and die cut your frame and that'll give you the panel for the inside of the card. So let's create a standard slimline card. This measures seven inches by eight and a half inches and I'm scoring it at three and a half inches. So the finished card will be three and a half by eight and a half. Now I've got that panel that we spattered and I'm going to stamp that cute little sentiment and this again comes on the stamp set and it says, a little birdie told me it was your birthday. So I'll ink that up with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink and we can go ahead and stamp that. So here's where I decided to cut off the post on our birdhouse and I decided I was going to hang this from a tree branch instead. So again, that's going to change up the look of your stamp a little bit. I'm just trimming that off and I'm trimming off any of that little bit of white that was showing there. Now I'll just quickly try to position these little vines or branches just so I can determine where I want that string to be that's going to hang from the tree. I've got my Miss T rulers. You get two in a pack and these are these cute little T rulers that are perfect for card makers. And I'm going to mark with a pencil where I want that string to begin and about where I want it to end. So I've got my T ruler and I can draw a nice straight line. And I'll be using a black permanent Faber-Castell pen. This is the um, permanent black pen. And I just need to, again, just draw a little line there that's maybe a couple inches long. Now again, I'm going to just kind of position things here just to see where I'm at and if that looks like it's long enough and it looks perfect. So I can go ahead and glue down a couple of these vines. 
I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue these down. Now again, I'm keeping my card fairly flat. You could certainly pop these up if you wanted some more dimension, and you could also pop up your little birdhouse, but we are going to be gluing everything flat to the card. I can trim away those vines, any excess. And now we can go ahead and check the bottom of the birdhouse where I also wanted some vines to be. I wanted it to look like it was kind of hanging between the branches on the tree. So again, we can just cut away any excess there. I'm just using my Tim Holtz, the small detail scissors to do that. And now I want to back that birdhouse with some pretty yellow paper. I've got the scrapbook.com Warms paper collection. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch collection. And you can see all the beautiful colors you get in here. I'm going to grab this light yellow color and I'm going to go ahead and trace this out with a pencil because again I want to back that birdhouse so that this will peek through the windows and the doors. So I'll just grab those same scissors and cut away just following that those lines and I'm just doing it really roughly at this point because I'm going to cut away a little bit more later on. I've placed some glue on the back of the birdhouse. I did not place glue behind those doors because I want those to pop up just a little bit. I want you to be able to open those. And then I'm just going to trim away any of that excess yellow cardstock. And again, that yellow will show through those little window openings and behind those doors. So now we can go ahead and place our birdhouse onto this card panel. And I'm just centering that. And we've got all these cute little flowers. And remember, there were two sizes of the flowers, so I'm going to kind of mix these up and place these on these little branches. Again, here you could pop these up if you prefer. You could add a gem to the center of these flowers if you wanted to give them a bit more dimension but I'm trying to create a dimensional card without adding any of those types of items, which is kind of unusual for me because I really do love adding all the little embellishments. But again, my goal was to try to keep this card as flat as possible. And this is the fun part, just adding all of these pieces and laying out your design. I love this part when everything's colored and die cut and you're ready to do your assembly. Now here I'm going to just cut down one of those little vines and I'll add it to my birdhouse. And then I can add a few more flowers down at the bottom. And then what I'll do is take again some of the leftovers from that vine some of those little leaves and I'm going to just tuck those in behind the flowers Just grab another one and we'll pop that right down in there. And you can see that adds a lot more interest to this little flower arrangement. So I've gone ahead and added some of my birds. Let's add a few more. These are just so cute. I love these little birds. And remember, these birds can be used on any card. I've used them before for other projects. So uh, you look at these pieces separately and you can use them on lots of different cards. So there's that frame we die cut. I'm going to add it to the card. Again, it has that pretty double stitched border. And 
And then what I'm going to do is place that panel right down inside that frame. So we're not popping anything up again. We're just going to insert it inside that panel. So I've got plenty of glue on there and I'm going to set that down. It's really easy to line up. It'll pop right into place. Now I did notice the corners on the slim line are a little bit rounded, so I'm just going to come in with my scissors and just round off the card a little bit just to match that border. And then let's add a little bow to the ribbon holding up the birdhouse. And I just quickly added that with my black permanent pen. I've got my Wink of Stella glitter pen and I'm going to add a little glitter to the center of each of those flowers. So let's take a look at the finished card and again look at all the dimension and texture we have without adding any pop dots or gems or any additional layers and I just love these little birds. Again, they all of these images can be used on other cards and I've used those vines many times on other cards. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.